Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, the YouTube channel where we are fortunate enough to try one of these incredible puzzles every day. These are all, well, every, everything. I mean, the last week or two of puzzles on, on, on the channel has been out of this world. And we've got another puzzle today. This one's by Krangoon, who has appeared on the channel before. I think, I think with a puzzle called Spokes that I did. And Mark might have done one of Krangoon's puzzles as well. Uh, this is called Exactly 80 and is apparently something of a masterpiece. So we should be in for an absolutely top quality puzzle again. Um, I'm trying to work out why it's called Exactly 80. I can see some of the cages don't have values. Is it the corner cages? Yes, it is. Look at that. The two by two cages in the corners sum to 80. Now, yes, I've done enough two puzzles with two by twos in the corners being important to be very, very suspicious about this one. But, but we'll get to that once we get to solving it. Um, anyway, what do I, else do I have to mention before we get cracking on this? I have got to, well, I've got to say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kate. I think you've just turned 20, if I'm not mistaken. And your friend, Olivia, got in contact with us to say that you might appreciate a shout out. So we're very happy to do that. Um, uh, Olivia described you as somebody who always tries to make sure everyone feels included, which is a wonderful quality in today's world, in my opinion, and that you have a very contagious laugh. And I will comment on that as well to say in this world of contagious things, I think the well, the most the most lovely thing is to have a contagious laugh. So well done on that. And we wish you a very happy day indeed. Um, other than that, the only thing I want to mention is that, well, it, tomorrow is the 1st of February. I know many of you will know this, but that means tomorrow is Patreon Reward Day. So if you're a patron of the channel on Patreon, four o'clock tomorrow, we are going to release a quite approachable Sudoku hunt. Um, now this this is designed to be easier than some of the uh, the some of the patron puzzles that we've published recently. Uh, we know a lot of them are very difficult. It's just the nature of what we get sent. Um, but we, so we've we've made this one deliberately slightly easier so that everyone should be able to have a go at it. And if you do manage to finish it, send in your answer by the 20th of February for a chance to win a prize. Um, yeah, and we hope that we really do hope that you enjoy that. Um, and if you even if you don't, there's a lot of extra stuff on Patreon at the moment. Um, I still haven't uploaded my solve of Fist and Fell's, uh, most recent puzzle, the puzzle that Mark has released a solve of on, over on Patreon, but I did the puzzle in a different way and I am going to upload that video, hopefully if I remember to do it later today. Um, now, let's get on with Krangoon's puzzle. It's uh, The rules are quite short, in fact. We have just got a normal Sudoku rule supply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, if given. And that is because... Yes, we have some un... Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look at this because it gives me an opportunity to mention the secret and you know I never need a second a second chance to do that. So those cages there don't have a total in the corner. What's going on? Well, in fact, we can work out the total because each of these cages uh, has nine cells in it. And given that digits cannot repeat within a cage, I don't know if I read out that line of the rules, but that is the next line of the rules. As digits can't repeat within a cage, those nine digits must be the digits one to nine in some order. And if you add up the digits one to nine, you get the number 45. So in fact, each of these cages could have had a total in its top left corner of 45. Um, but Krangoon decided to make us work that out. And I don't blame, I don't blame them at all. Um, now, what else have we got? Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So let's take a look at a thermometer. There's a thermometer down here, look. And as mercury would rise along a thermometer, if we make this a two, this square now has to be higher than two. So the mercury must rise as we go up the thermometer. So that would be a legitimate way of filling that thermo in. Do have a go at the puzzle. Uh, the way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video and that should take you to a page that looks identical to this one, where you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I know nothing about this one, by the way. I don't know how hard it is. Um, 
and you'll probably have to judge that from the length of the video assuming and if you if the video comes out it means i have solved it there you go there's a bit of a spoiler there <laughs> but we don't release videos of puzzles where we don't finish them and i often well probably the question that we get asked most is how often do we fail a lot more than we used to that's for true um probably one in five one in six puzzles now is a failure I haven't had a failure yet today though so this is my first attempt today and I really hope it'll be my only attempt today how do we do this is it this thermo that we've got well okay let's deal with the obvious first let's deal with the fact that these two by twos in the corner are heavily redolent of the Fistemafel ring I am not going to prove Fistemafel unless I can see it's possibly relevant, but if you've not come across the Fistemafel ring, it is a theorem that states that this blue ring here, the 16 digits in this blue ring, are exactly the same 16 digits as appear in the 16 2 by 2s or 16 cells in the 2 by 2s in the four corners of the grid. A remarkable thing, but it is true of any Sudoku. So if you, go and, if you go and find a Sudoku you've done in the paper, you can check that this works and it will. Um, but here, the thing that I am seeing is that this blue ring, unless I'm missing a trick, doesn't overlap with anything at all that looks even remotely interesting. So I'm a bit reluctant to go down the path of proving Fistemafel until we can see why we need to do it. Um, so yes, so that brings us back to this thermo. This thermo is the longest thermo, and if I'm mistaken, that one's only five cells. This one is six cells. So that means that this first digit here can be one, two, three, or four, and the last digit can be six, seven, eight, or nine. And if I was pencil mark, I would pencil mark these cells in as well, and I am very reluctant to do that. <laughs> Unless I can see unless I can see something that's going to be rather more restricting, which I can't, I'm just going to end up with six cells, each of which has four different options. And clearly that's not going to accelerate our understanding of the universe very much. What on earth is going on here? Um, it must be geometry somehow. It must be these massive cages, mustn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Right, okay. Yeah, that's really clever, actually. It's really clever and really obvious, and I should have got it instantly and didn't. But let's look at those digits. Let's highlight them again, highlight them in orange. Now, those orange digits must appear in a nine-cell cage somewhere. So they must appear, those four digits have to appear in that nine-cell cage. Well, they can't repeat in their own box if you put a 2 there and then a 2 there, there's definitely a problem. Um, so these digits must in fact be those four digits, mustn't they? So that means that these four digits along the thermometer sum to 21, and that must be interesting. And actually, because, the, because of the symmetry of this puzzle, that is true for all of the cages, isn't it? So we can do exactly the same here. Um, what what colour should we use? Let's use yellow there, and we can use green here. And made, made, we've made a very pretty pattern indeed. But this should be the thermo that is the most restricted, um, because it's got more cells than the other thermos. So let's just work out what is and isn't possible. Is four really possible there? No, no. Because given that we know these orange cells have to add to 21, if I go four, the whole thermo is forced, so it has to look like this, and those cells definitely don't add to 21. They add up to, what is it, 26. So that's different. There we go, these are knowledge bombs that we impart on cracking the cryptic. So that square is not four. Can it actually be three? If it's if it goes three, we could go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there's too many. Three, four, and seven, eight would be the minimum. And that, I think, adds up to 22. So this square is down to a 1 or a 2 now. I think it can be 2. If we go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, now we're going underneath the total. 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, and 13. So we're up to 18 as a minimum. 
with a 2 here. And 18 is less than 21. Can you go 9 there? If you go 9 here... Uh, yeah, you can just... Oh, no, it's the better question is whether you can go 6 here. 6 won't work. 6, 5, and that would be a 2, 1, and that definitely doesn't add to 21. So we need to go from the other end when we're looking at this digit. What about 7? If that's 7 and 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, the maximum you could make these would be a 3, 2 pair, and that's too small. So you can't put 7 here. So this square is 8 or 9. Now this square... So if this was 8, 9, 8, 9, that would be 17. These squares would have to add up to 4, which could be a 3 and a 1. OK. Um, so how low can this digit be before we have a problem? 7, 16, 8, 7, 15, 6, 9 is 15. So if this was 6 and this was 9, that would be 5, 4, and the maximum these could be would be 5. No, that doesn't work. Right, you can't put 6 into this position, because if you do, even if we max out this with 9, the problem is 6 is affecting the thermo so profoundly. So we could go, the maximum now this domino could be is a 3, 2 pair, because we'd have to go 5, 4 on the thermo, 3, 2 as a maximum, and that doesn't add up to 21. So this can't be a 6. That square there, uh, let's delete all that, that square there has to be a 7 or an 8. Now what about this digit then? But this... Uh, uh, I don't like the look of that digit. How high can this digit be is the question we need to ask. So, can it be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... No, it can't be 5, can it? So it's got to be lower than 5. It's got to be 4, 3, or 2, I think. Although if it's 2, that would be a 1. And then these would have to add up to 18, which is impossible. So that's not 2. Hang on. Can this really be 5? If that's 5... 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's definitely too many, isn't it? That would be 70. Yes, it would be too many. Right, so this square is weird. I think that has to be 3 or 4. Which I'm really surprised about. But So 2 would definitely force 1 onto the bulb. It would definitely break this. Yeah, OK. So each of these digits, believe it or not, is we can reduce it to a choice of just 2, two numbers. Each of these cells just has a choice of being 2 numbers. But that's weird. And what does that actually do for us in terms of this box? And more to the point, because I don't think it tells us anything about this box. I could still put like, I mean, I could put 8, 9 on the thermo there. And these two digits would be low. But I, even if I did that, I wouldn't know anything about anything else. Ah! It's not Fistemafel now, is it? Now we've established this relationship between the dominoes and the 2 by 2s in the corner. It's... It's not in any way I understand it to be, anyway. Um, ah, what on earth is going on? Is it the fact that... I wonder if the title's important, exactly 80. Is that trying to say that rather than look at the 2 by 2s we should now be looking at the dominoes that we know. Because, because I know those orange squares add to 21, these blue squares add to 20, etc. These highlighted cells add up to 80. So is it some sort of set equivalence? 80. I don't know. I don't like the look of that either, though, because even if I think that, for example, columns 4 and 6, rows 4 and 6 are interesting. What set do I offset against those digits? So basically I've just, all I've drawn is a noughts and, cross, noughts and crosses board. 
and I've used four sets of the digits one to nine to do that. I need to I need to have some sort of equivalence between these cells and other cells, and I can't see how to do that. No, no, I re I mean I really can't see how to do that. This is problematic, isn't it? I'm, there is something very fundamental about this I am not understanding. It's, it must be Vistamafel. Let me go back to that. Um, <laughs> say it must be. I highlight it to make, you know, realization dawn. And I look at that and go, no, that just doesn't do anything. Surely that does nothing. I mean, I know these cells, the purple cells, sum to 80 as well, I suppose. So, but I, these are all not in the same rows. Oh, this is horror. This is horrible. I don't, I don't like the look of that. That doesn't feel right. So, can I actually, maybe I can narrow down where this digit. No, so if that's a two, it, okay, if that's a two, yeah, that digit. Where does that digit go in the two by two? Maybe that's the question we need to ask because it can't go in those two squares by Sudoku and it can't actually go at the end of the thermo because this is the lowest digit on this string of orange digits. So that digit goes exactly there. And that maybe this is what we have to do is to sort of... Now this digit... That could go at the start of the thermo or it could go here. Oh, but now this digit must go there, mustn't it? Is this the point? Yeah, maybe this is the point. So we can actually start to colour how these digits are disposed within the 2x2 two two, because that one now is not the same as purple because it's on the same thermo as purple. So that one, which I'll give a grey flash to, must go in the corner. Now this one is a 7 or an 8. And it's on the thermo now, so those two must be the same. I'm running out of colours at a lick here, which is a problem. And these two must be the same. And now I have run out of colours. So that means... But again, this is the most restricted thermo by miles, isn't it? I'm not going to be able to do anything nearly as profound as this I think in any of the other corners so we really need to make this sweat to work so we've got grey going here grey and black end up here and light grey and purple end up here is this something to do with but even if I can force light grey and purple into these squares, it's not really doing very much. Sorry about this, everybody. I'm really, I am trying to spot what's going on. So these digits. These digits end up here. Those although we don't know where grey, grey and black go. See, if grey and black were on that thermo, that would be quite interesting. Grey and black. So these are definitely light grey and purple. Two of these three digits are light grey and purple. Ah! Ah, right, okay, there we go. That's interesting. I can't put black in there. That's okay, that's definitely interesting. Because, because in blue, we've got the relationship between the blue dominoes. So we know these digits are the same as blue. If I put black in there, Let's say this square is the, is the black digit. Now, one of these digits has to be black. And that's going to clash. Because if these two are black, Ha! 
Hang on, is that always true? Or is that just true because this black ends up here? This is really strange. I'm sorry about this again. I'm still trying to work out what's going on. Oh, this is right. Okay, okay. This this is very, very cool indeed. Because I don't, I've been focusing on the black digit, but I don't think it matters actually. I don't think it matters which which of these digits we look at. Any of them can't go in there. Let me try and explain why. If if we try and put, for example, in fact, we can do this at the bottom of the grid without even polluting it with the fact that we know some things about this. Let's just let's just think about this digit. Let's make that red. So let's 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 see if we can construct a general argument that the red digit, which could be in any of those four cells, cannot go in a, in the green box down here. And it's true because. If this, well, this being the red digit means that the red, if there is a repeated digit between yellow and green, the red digit must be in one of those two cells in green, which means that now the red digit cannot appear in either of those squares. Uh, we, know, we know that the red digit here must be appearing in one of these four squares by the geometry of the nine cage, but it's not in either of those two cells now because these two cells both see red. And if we'd started with red at the bottom, there would have been a red up here and, and they would still have, would have seen red. So these cannot now contain the red digit. The red digit has to be up here. But similarly, in this situation, the red digit also can't be in green in these two squares because it will see, um, it will see these two cells obviously see red in one of those squares. So red also has to be up there. And that means red is repeating always in row six. And because of the symmetry of the grid, I mean, that argument just holds everywhere. So that means, that means that none of these digits appear in blue. And none, and none of these digits appear in yellow. What does that mean? So if none of these digits appear in blue, I think there has to be one of these higher digits on this thermo now. I'm not even sure I know what that means. None of the digits. So any, any two by two in this puzzle in the corner sees four different digits. Oh, right, right. hang about. Hang about, there's some, right, okay. Let's have a think then about the number of repeated digits that are even possible in this puzzle. Because we know the 16 cells in the corners now. We, well, we know there are 16 cells in the corners. There is a fatuous thing to say. There are 16 cells in these two by twos in the corner of this puzzle. But we know the maximum number of repeated digits that we can put in those 16 cells now is eight, because I could, I could duplicate all of these down there, and I could duplicate all of these down there, and that would allow eight repeated digits amongst those 16 cells. But we know actually that that's not possible. And that's because, of course, we can't repeat any of the digits in there, cannot repeat here, and, any of the, and they cannot repeat there. So the maximum number of times that this digit, whatever that, let's say this digit's a one, the maximum number of times that a one now appears in two by twos in the corner is twice, because it could appear down there only. So that is possible. 
But that is wrong. Well, it's, it's wrong to say that there are eight repeated digits only in this puzzle, because if there were eight, if these cells were the same as those, and these cells were the same as these, then these cages should add up to the same number, which they don't. So there are not eight repeated digits in this puzzle. But given that there must be at least eight different digits in the 16 cells, because we know that those four are different from those four, then, and we, we've now worked out that not, there aren't exactly eight different digits in the puzzle, there must be eight different digits in the two by twos in the corner. There must be nine different digits in the two by twos in the corner. So every digit in the puzzle appears at least once in the 16 cells in the corner. But, but, but so those nine, but, but they can't appear more than once, can they? So again, if this is a one, you can't put a one there, there, or there. So the only, so the maximum time, the maximum number of times that any digit appears in the 16 cells is twice. So given that, so there must be seven repeats is where I'm getting to because there are, in order to get from nine different digits up to the 16 digits we need, we must have seven of them repeating because 16 minus nine is seven and we can't put more than one repeated digit anywhere. So seven of the digits repeat. And that's a, that, well, that, ah, this is so clever. This is so clever. Um, so we know that there are seven repeated digits now, which means that one of these two by twos, its diagonal two by two must be an exact duplicate of itself because the maximum number of repeats I could include was, was eight. And that would be if these four cells were the same as those four and these four were the same as those four. We know that's wrong because, because these can't be the same. But given I must have seven repeats, I've got to uh, divide up the repeated digits between one of these two by twos will have to have four repeats in its diagonal opposite and one of them will have three repeats in its diagonal opposite. Well, given those two have the same total and these two don't, we now know that those digits are the same as those digits. And therefore, I'm going to make orange into green. Uh, oh no, hang on, I want to do it the other way around. I want to make orange into green. So now, these green digits are the same as these green digits. And I suspect there's a lot we can do with this because I also know that there's three repeats between those cells and those cells. But I'm wondering actually about the thermo cells here because these thermo digits, which are obviously going to be in a specific order, you know, this is the smallest one. So doesn't that have to be the same as that? How could it not be? Given these four digits are the same as those four digits, they, yeah, the lowest one must be that one. So that's a one or a two, and it is purple. This one is a three or a, f oh, whoopsie, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to put three or four in the cell. That's a three or a four, and it's light gray. Can't really see that, but maybe we don't need to. I think I will remember those are the same. That's got to be a seven or an eight, and it's dark gray. And that is an eight or a nine, and it's black. So now we've got to put two high digits along there and two low digits here. This is absolutely fascinating and surprising. I mean, this is not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> you see the two by twos in the corner, you just think it's Fistimafel. And maybe it is, maybe it will be Fistimafel. But for it to start like this is really I mean, for these cells to be the same as those, these cells, 
That's amazing to me. That is absolutely amazing. Now, the other thing I'm thinking is there are 16 cells with seven, seven repeated digits. So two of the digits are, don't, there are only two digits in this puzzle that don't have a repeat. So if you, yeah, we can use the secret because if we had if we had 18 digits, or if we have nine digits and then nine repeated digits, we know that those digits would add up to 45 plus 45 equals 90. This is why this puzzle is called exactly 80. This is, oh, this is just, it's just ridiculous setting. It really is. Because let's think about the difference between having two sets of the digits one to nine and what we've got in this puzzle. In this puzzle, we've got one set of the digits one to nine, because we know we know that. And we've also got, oh, someone's just added me on a friends list on Steam. I don't understand how they've done that. But anyway, um, yeah, we know we've got one set of the digits one to nine in the 16 cells in the two by twos in the corner. And we know we've got another seven digits that are repeating seven of those nine digits. Now I'm getting, now I'm confusing myself. Now I'm confusing myself. So hang on, is that true what I've just said? I've got nine digits. And then I've repeated four of them here. No, yes, it, it is, well it is true, it is true. It is true. Yes, I've got four repeats here. I've got four repeats here. Three of these, don't know which ones, are going to repeat with three of those. And there's going to be one digit here and one digit here that are lonely. They are not going to be the same as each other and they are not going to have a friend in any other position within the two by two boxes. So those lonely digits must add up to 10, mustn't they? Because we know that the, the, the 16 cells in the corner add up to 80. We know that if, if it was, if we had repeated, uh, if we had two sets of the digits, one to nine, so what each digit repeated exactly once, we would have 90. So the missing repeated digits must add up to the difference between 90 and 80, which is 10. So so we now know that the repeated digits, the, sorry, the non-repeating digits, which I'm going to label these ones in the corner just for the sake of just giving them a label. They might not be here. I don't know where they are. But those two digits add up to 10. And the, ah, yes, I, I see. And this, this box adds up to 20. And this box adds up to 18. So we could express this box as x plus orange equals 20 and we can express this box as uh, we don't want that to be orange to make that argument we can express this box as this box as x plus x which is these three digits plus orange equals 20 we can express this box as x which will be those digits because they're the repeats of those plus red equals 18 so that means that orange equals red plus two. And if you think about the two way, or the, the ways of making 10 in two digits, one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, four, six. The only one where the two apart is four, six. So we've now worked out that orange is six and red is four. And that is progress. So we now, it's taken me a long time to find that progress though. So that's six up here and there's a four out down here. So that means there's a four in one of those four cells, uh, which is a horrific thing to have to pencil mark because I want to do that. But of course, that's not, that's going to mislead me because I'm going to think there's a four in here and in here, whereas actually only one of these is a four. So what does this mean? I can't even read the total there. This is 18. 
and we know it's got a 4 in it and we know it doesn't have a 6 in it now because we know that the 4 and the 6 are the lonely digits. Ah, ah, that, right. Now this square has to be a 3, so our first digit is this cell because, because this, this lonely digit here is, that's its nature. That's what we've discovered about it. It is lonely. So it is not repeated in any of the other 15 cells in the two by twos in the corner. And if it's not in green, it's not there because that is just a green cell that's been sort of transmuted over to this position. So that has to be not to be a four, that's a three. Which means that's a three. So one of these squares is a three. Um, I can't remember if that was going to do something to these digits. Um, what was the, I can't remember, what was the option if that wasn't a three, it was a four. So that suggests it's going to be harder for this to be an eight now. So if this was eight plus seven, no, we can't get there. So that that's the corollary. Working out this is a three means this has to be a nine because otherwise we're going eight plus seven equals a maximum of three or plus three plus two has got to equal 21 and it won't add up to enough digits so that's a nine so now we've got 12 here which means that, uh, those two have to sum to nine and you can see there are two ways that will work but that's the black digit so that goes there that's the light gray digit so that goes there this now has to be a nine over here nine Yes, okay, and now nine has to find a home in the 21 cage. Well, it can't go there and it can't be in the bulb because if you put it in the bulb, that has to be a 10 or more. So that's a nine. Three now is forced to go here, which means this is a one or a two and therefore it gets a purple flash and that square is a seven or an eight and it gets a gray flash. Okay. Um, now, what does that mean? I don't know is the answer. Uh, I can see three has to be in one of those two squares. And I think we might be able to do, mate, can we do some work on this 18 cage now? We know it's got a four in it and we know but we know much more than that, actually. We know it's got a four in it. We know it doesn't have a three or a nine or a six in it. So how actually is this possible? So the other three digits are adding up to 14, which means they must have, they must have one even digit in them, because if it was all four even digits, which it can't be because we can't use six anyway for all four even digits add up to 20. So this um, and because it's adding up to any the three cells are adding up to a 14 they must have an even number of odd digits in that sum. So so we either have to pair up the four with an eight or a two. So if we pair it up with an eight we get 12 and the other two digits would have to be a one five pair. So one option is this is 4, 8, and then a 1, 5 pair. But if we paired up the 4 with a 2 in here, which we might be able to do, then the other two cells would have to both be odd, and they would be adding up to 12, which would be 5, 7. Okay, well, well, okay, so there's always a five in that cage is what I think we've worked out from that. Let me just double check that. It's either eight, two, not eight, two, what am I talking about? It's either four, two, five, seven, because we can't use three, nine, or it's four, eight, one, five. Yes, yeah, so there is always a five in there. Um, and I need to move slightly. Um, sitting in the same place for ages does me no good and these videos are getting longer and longer and longer um now but that's that's a result of the puzzles getting fascinating and fascinating 
which I'm sure is not a word, but never mind. Um, so, so what, whatever this is actually will determine the nature of this. Um, because obviously once we know what gray is, it couldn't repeat in this two by two. I don't really like having six digits in a pencil marks in a K. I mean, I can see that one can't be eight. Um, maybe I'll get rid of that eight. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, it can't be nine actually, because that would make nine a yellow digit and nine can't be a yellow digit. So that's not seven either. One, two, four or five into this square. Again, I don't think that's terribly useful, is it? Um, can we do anything better with the six up there? So, oh yeah, I tell you what, because we know there's a five in here, there's got to be a five up here. Because we know every digit that is not six or four in these two cages is repeating in the other one. Um, so that's now 11. Oh, oh, I see, yeah, okay. So that's, that makes sense, because we need two more cells in here that add up to nine. And of course we need two more cells, apart from the four and the five there, we need two more cells in there that add up to nine, and they're gonna be the same digits. So, so that's why we're either looking at one, eight or two, seven in each case. But we don't know which. So what does that mean? It means I've got to put a five in one of those cells. I've got to put a five in one of these cells. I've got to put a six in one of those cells. Um, uh, that's a three. So is that, so that's got to be four or five or six. Sorry, I'm just going to try pencil marking this a bit more. Four, five, six, five, six, seven there. Um, no, okay. Apologies if you're seeing what I'm almost certainly not seeing. I'm trying to understand. Obviously, okay, purple gets ruled out of that, but given purple could be one or two, that doesn't help us. That cell, that cell sees all of, all of that thermo, doesn't it? So that cell has nothing, okay, that cell has nothing in common with green. And, and it also has nothing in common with those two yellows or those two blues. But do I know what these two, do I know how to allocate these yellows? I mean, I know, I know that one will go there because it can't repeat on its own thermo. So those two are the same. I might give those a flash actually. Um, so now that one and that one are this. This is really amazing the way you can sort of color these in. The problem is I've run out of colors now though. Is this helping me to do this coloring? Is it going to help me get this digit, knowing it's the same as that digit? No, no, what I mean when I said it's the same, this, whatever this domino is, is seeing this cell. And therefore not, this digit is not the same as that is what we're learning. I'm not sure it does. Although I'm not certain about that, I have to say. Ah, right, no, not this digit, this digit. Ah, oh, good grief, right, yeah, this, this digit, this is one of the greatest digits. This is one of the greatest cells in my history of doing Sudoku, that digit right there, because that digit is a four. 
that is a four. Why do I think that's a four? Well, it's because it sees all of the green digits. So it's not a green digit. But it also sees all of the blue digits here. It sees all of them. So that means that it, this, this, has to, this sees eight digits. And the only digit it doesn't see is the digit that's not in blue and not in green, which is the four digit down there. So that's a four. And the symmetrical counterpart to that is that digit, which sees all of yellow. And all it's this digit sees all of green as well, because it sees those and those, which are the four different greens. So that's a six, because it's got to be the digit that appears in blue and is not anywhere else in the grid. So that so this, this thermo becomes four, five and six, which is ludicrous. That square is not a is this square is not a three anymore, because if it was, that would have to be a six and the six would repeat in the box. So that's a three. Oh, I see. And these two. Oh, yes, of course. OK. And those these two digits now we can color because they must be that green purple digit and that gray green digit. And nine. OK, yeah, nine must go here in the box. So certainly we've actually made some progress. Nine. Yes, okay, and now nine in box two must be in one of two places, but that means nine in box um, eight can be placed because nine is in one of these three squares, but nine definitely is not yellow because it's not allowed to repeat in these two boxes. So nine goes there, which means nine goes here. So how many nines have we got? The answer is, lo oh yeah, loads. And in fact, I can get the nine here because the nine is forced into one of those three cells by Sudoku. In fact, that's been available for a while, pro probably. I just didn't see it, but therefore that's a nine as well. So nines are all done. We've just done the nines out of nowhere. Someone got cross with me for saying out of nowhere the other day. They said, it's not out of nowhere. It's out of all the logic you've done. And I know you're right, but it's sort of, it's because it's unexpected to me that I feel it's out of nowhere. Um, so these two digits are either 1, 8 or 2, 7. So these two digits are either 1, 8 or 2, 7. And what relationship and the oh these digits live in yeah okay these digits live in blue and yellow don't they because if we think about if we think about the world we're living in now in this puzzle we have green digits now the green digits are these two digits and those two digits they are all their nature is green So they are the green digits. We have three common digits between this blue set and this yellow set. Now those digits are those digits because the four we know just lives in one of the 50, 16 cells in the two by twos and the six lives in one of the two by twos. So these digits are common between this cage and this cage. So this is a blue and a yellow digit and this is a blue and a yellow digit so that digit yeah okay so where does that digit go in the puzzle now we know because of its nature of being blue and yellow, we know it's a blue digit, so it's in here, but it's also not in there. So it's definitely in that domino there and those squares, which means it's one of these three squares. But at the same time, remember, it's also a yellow digit. So it being a yellow digit, it's in one of these four squares, and it's not in this domino because it sees that domino via 
being in the same column. So it must be in one of those two squares, which means simultaneous with being in one of these three squares, it, in this column look, it's got to be in one of those three squares. And the only square that meets both of those criteria is that one. So those two digits are the same. I have no idea how I'm going to reflect that, but those two digits are the same. Um, and we know that they are ones, twos, sevens, and eights. And then how on earth am I going to show this? I'm run, I've really run out of colors badly, haven't I? I don't know if I can get rid of a color somehow from somewhere else. Um, I really want to record the fact those are the same. How can I do that legitimately? Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just make these two blue or yellow. No, I'll make these two yellow, and that will tell me. I mean, I know that they're also going to be in the blue set, but that will at least hopefully remind me that these two are the same. And now I will make this one the same as its counterpart, because that logic must be symmetrical, which is suggests it's going to be this one. But I'm going to check that. Um, so we're going to make this the blue cell. So where does we know that the, this blue cell appears in yellow and blue? So it's in one of those cells. It can't be in those because it's in the same column. So it's in one of these. So it's in one of these three cells. It's the same logic. Yeah. And this cell is also in yellow. So it's in one of those. It can't be in these because these are in the same row. So it's in one of those. So it's also in one of these. So the common cell is there. And these two cells are the same. And that is on a thermo. Good grief. Good grief. This puzzle. I mean, I've said this a bit recently, but this is an absolute masterpiece. It really is, because what is this digit now? Because it's a blue, di it's the same as that digit, which can't be a four, five, or a six, but it's gotta be greater than three and less than that, whatever we put in that cell. So it's got to be seven. We can't put eight in here. We'd have to put eight and a half in there. So that's a seven, which means that's an eight, which means that's an eight, which means that's an eight, which means that's a one, that's a one, that's a one, that's a one, that's an eight, that's an eight, that's a one. Holy moly. Um, to quote Elton John, um, that's, that's now a two by Sudoku, so that's a two. So two in yellow is over here. So, well, or maybe is the point that two is in yellow now? Does that mean, and oh yes, and yellow doesn't have a one. So yellow can't have a one five pair in it, which was one of the things I wanted to put in it. So yes, in fact, now, yes, now we know the nature of yellow, of course, because we know that we know that yellow has a two five and a seven in it. Yes, 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 I understand. Slowly, the light is dawning. Two, five, seven, and the, the digit was four, and that should add up to 18 and does. So these squares are also 257, but they also get the 6, which takes them up to 20. And I'm sure that that's very important indeed. How do we finish this? So now these squares are now 2, 5, 6, and 7. These squares are 2, 4, five and seven we've got we've got some thermos that we've not used which we might have to or we can rule seven out of those squares I've just seen I suspect there's all sorts of Sudoku now that we can do that I've not been focused on at all I can rule two out of those squares so these are four I can remove six from that square seven from these squares. So seven has to appear in one of those squares then, whoopsie. So that's not seven. So this is now down to five or six, although we can take two out of these, so two must be up here. And <laughs> can we do more? <laughs> Probably. Um, hmm. Where should we look now? 
That is the question. I don't know the answer. Uh, where is... Oh, I've got a five, six, seven triple here. Is that really true? So this square is a one. Let me, I'm just going to double check that because that, that doesn't feel like it. I suppose that can't be a one because it's on the thermo. And those can't be ones because one doesn't belong in blue. Yeah, okay, I believe that. That's a one. So that's a one by Sudoku. How many ones have we got? Loads. Loads. But not enough, apparently. There's a one in one of those two squares and a one in one of those two squares. Bobbins. Eight. Ooh, where does eight go in box seven? He can't go on the thermo because that can't be a nine. So eight goes there. So that's eight, that's three, that's one, that's one. That's three by Sudoku. Whoa. So that must be known because it's not, yeah, that's, this is like a naked single six. Ah, and that's on a thermo, so that's a seven. So seven comes out of those squares. Seven can't go on its own thermo, so seven hides in the corner. Yeah, which makes sense because we had given seven a red flash. So we've now got a two, four, five triple here. Uh, the color scheme has gone absolutely all over the place now, but never mind. Let's just try see if we can keep going. That thermo's got done. That five is ruling things out of here. So this is six, seven. So that is two, five now. So these squares are three, eight. And there's an eight here. So eight in that column goes there. That's, oh, I made a mistake. Not three, eight. I think that that might survive the eight up here, but that, I misscanned this column and thought it was three, eight. It's not. It's six, eight, but it's still the same. The eight still goes up here and the six goes here. Phew. Um, now, this, so that's a six by Sudoku. Okay, come on. We must be close to cracking this now. It feels like I might be. <laughs> Twos, fours and fives into these squares. Oh, that's giving me a nice triple I can see in the bottom row. So that square should be a something. That's an eight. How many eights have we done? I feel like I've said that's an eight a lot. Yeah, that's an eight. There's four eights looking at box three. These two squares are now known. They are a four and a seven. It doesn't seem to be resolved, but we'll certainly put them in. And those squares have got to be a five, six pair. And that doesn't seem to be resolved. Oh, it is resolved by this two, four, five triple. So that's a six, that's a five. Five comes out of those two squares, and in this column, that digit should be a known digit. It should be a six. A five here means that's not a five, so that this digit's now known to be a seven. It is still working, I think, which is a huge relief. So this is two, three, and four, and that's a five, so that's not a five two three four triple so this is a two or uh, it seems to only be able to be two or four just looking at the row because the three here seems to be removing some of its optionality okay um can we get that digit yes i can i've got two four here so that can't be an, another four so that's a five this is on the thermo but so that's a five so this square should be a two or a four, and this square should be a two or a four. Something must resolve all this, but I don't know what it is. Uh, is there a thermo I've not used yet? What about those digits then at the top? They are a six and a seven, which I can fill in. That's a bit hopeful. And therefore that square's got to be a three. So that's not a three anymore. Oh, sorry. Look, there's a two in there, so that's got to be four. That's got to be four. That's got to be seven. Has this done it? Uh, six can come out of those two squares. Four is uh, four gives me that digit, that digit. Yes, the twos and the fours are unwinding along the bottom now, so that's useful. Two, four, 
this is now a 4-5 pair. So we're sort of honing in on something at the top. Oh, I see what it is. Well, yes, I do see what it is. This this last little thermo is the key. That, ca that cannot be a 7 because it's in the bulb of a thermo that only leads up to a 6 as a maximum. So 7 has to go there. 7, 6. This thermo now is resolved. Look, it's got to be low high. So that's got to be in that order which means this is in that order. That's a two, four, that's a four, five. And that's the puzzle done, yes. <laughs> that is sensational, absolutely sensational and so surprising. There was, you know, I was absolutely convinced that was gonna be about the Fistenfell ring. And it wasn't at all. And it wasn't really, to be honest, about the geometry well, it was a bit about the geometry of the cages, but it was about the magnificent idea that you couldn't repeat digits in sort of uh, two by twos that shared a row or a column. And that, that with the mathematics of the 80 versus 90 actually allowed us to put, you know, to know there was a six in that cage, to know there was a four in that cage. And that allowed us to know things about these thermos. It is just what an idea that is. Seriously, if you are a constructor, please drop a comment into this video and please tell me whether I am I am right in thinking this is some sort of masterpiece. This is an incredible puzzle. If you've if you've watched the end, please do give the please please do give us a like. Uh, Mark was very uh, anxious that I should start to ask people to do that. I never do normally, but if you do like the video, please give it a like. I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful if a puzzle like this gets played widely because I think there are literally millions of people on the planet who would get a kick out of this. It's just incredible. And Crangoon, take a bow, loved it. Uh, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.